a headline-grabbing crime. I mean, I went to death row on this one person saying he did it. A murder in the white flight suburb of Edmond. I didn't do it. And I can, you know, I can truthfully say it, it happened because I was black. An all-white jury sent two men to death row. I heard somewhere somebody tell me, say, you could uh, always get out of prison, but you can't ever get out of the grave. Decades behind bars for a crime they swear they didn't do. There was a police report, a significant police report, uh, that was not turned over. An unexpected twist opens the door to freedom. But I want to thank you, Ali, for believing in my case. Right. The longest serving wrongful conviction in U.S. history. Today, Edmond, Oklahoma is a large, diverse community. But in 1974, it was essentially a sundown town, a safe haven for white families fleeing school integration in Oklahoma City. The population here, just 16,000 people in the 70s, and almost everyone was white. The police force was all white too. And in the early months of 1975, the department was focused on the Edmond Liquor Store murder. Detectives cast a wide net to try and snare two black men for a case that had gone cold. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allie Meyer, and this is a special presentation from News 4, The Wrong Man. It's a story we've been covering in depth more than 20 years. Let's begin at the scene of the crime. On the night before New Year's Eve, 1974, two black men murdered a white woman and wounded another in the process of raiding the register. It was a big deal in Edmond because Edmond had only recently begun to have any homicides. A clerk, Carolyn Sue Rogers, was killed. A customer, Belinda Brown, was wounded but survived. I had helped process the crime scene myself and there was little, if any, usable evidence came from the crime scene. No murder weapon, no usable fingerprints, no solid leads except one, an eyewitness account. Edmond police detectives interviewed 18-year-old Belinda Brown three days after the murder, still in the hospital, shot in the back of the head. I think really she was in a state of shock and really just glad to be alive. According to this police interview, the lead detective asked Brown, if you were given more time, could you remember anything else? Belinda Brown told police, if I wait much longer, it will get all jumbled up in my mind. She described two assailants for a composite sketch artist. It was difficult to, to get details from her, but uh, I think we got enough that we were finally able to come up with a, with a composite sketch. A month after the crime, and the headline tells the story of the day, dead end. Police had no idea who killed Carolyn Sue Rogers. I had talked to her the day before she died. The victim's family wanted answers. The community of Edmond wanted answers too. When I would call up there, they'd say they were working on it. They would let me know if anything happened. That's the last I heard. And so, more than a month after the murder, investigators went back to the wounded eyewitness with a fresh set of faces black men who'd been arrested at a party in Northeast Oklahoma City. This is the report that's made on the lineup. And the witness started picking suspects out of a lineup. Number two, I know was picked out of the lineup. I've been trying to figure, well, how did I get, you know, identified as the suspect? How did the police make me the suspect when the witness didn't even identify me as the suspect? According to police records from February of 1975, the single eyewitness participated in eight different lineups. She identified at least five different black men. But investigators zeroed in on Glenn Simmons and Don Roberts. Both had an alibi. Don Roberts was in Fort Worth, Texas, Glenn Simmons in Harvey, Louisiana. We know for a fact that Glenn was not in Oklahoma at that time. A dozen people in Louisiana remember playing pool with Simmons the night of the murder, then football on New Year's Day. I could tell him he had on some beige pants and a brown velvet jacket on a New Year's Eve night. But police had that teenage survivor, 
and Belinda Brown would prove to be a star on the witness stand. I mean, I went to death row on just one person saying he did it. I didn't do it. And I can, you know, I can truthfully say it happened because I was black. The district attorney charged Glenn Simmons and Don Roberts with the Edmund Liquor Store murder. Uh, you go with what you got. There is no police record of either one of the defendants being picked out of a lineup. But in court, for the first time, the eyewitness pointed the finger at the two black men in county-issued jumpsuits. She said they did it. They relied on eyewitness testimony, but uh, there again, we've seen where that's not always the best. Now looking back at it, uh, well, there are things I'd have done differently, sure. Two strangers tried as accomplices convicted of murder and sentenced to death in a jury trial that lasted two days. The witness carried it because she was so positive and the defense attorney did not shake her one bit. And I remember that. Over the years I've learned that sometimes the eyewitnesses are not always right. Simmons' defense attorney, who was later disbarred, had no idea the witness had picked out others in a lineup. That police report wasn't in the court file the prosecutor never turned it over to defense. I have enough proof right here to show, you know, legally that I didn't do it. For decades, Glenn Simmons penned his own filings, begging the court to take another look. He'd have been executed had a U.S. Supreme Court decision not forced Oklahoma to modify his death sentence to life in prison in 77. I believe in the system. I've always believed it. Even when it didn't do me right, I still believed in it. In 1996, Glenn Simmons hired a private investigator to find that exculpatory police report missing from the court file. And five years later, he asked News 4 for help. I read, I heard somewhere somebody told me, say, you could uh, always get out of prison, but you can't ever get out of the grave, you know. And so, you know, Every day above ground is a good day. Decades, Glenn Simmons languished behind bars, unable to prove his innocence in court, unwilling to admit guilt to parole out. I get the impression they want me to show remorse or take responsibility for the crime. And I'm constantly telling them I can't do that, you know, it's because it's not my crime, I didn't do it. Along the way, Simmons enlisted the most unlikely man to help, the lawyer who sent him to death row. The prosecutor, Mr. Miles Bell, I have no animosity toward him, you know, none at all. He was doing his job, what he thought was the fact. Bob Milfelt wrote a series of letters on Simmons' behalf. He told the Pardon and Parole Board the case had troubled him through the years, that the evidence was thin, that the verdict a week later could easily have been different. Glenn Simmons, okay. 413. This is where convicts come for a chance at freedom. Mr. Simmons, do you swear that the statements you're about to make to us and the answers to our questions will be the truth, so I hope you do. It's 2014, and Glenn Simmons now believes parole is his last hope. The official position of the office is an objection. Seven times already, this man has appeared before this board to beg for mercy. He has served 39 years behind bars. Clear. No. I'm going to say. Will the Pardon and Parole Board show mercy? The final vote after the break. And I appeal to the higher conscience of man to show mercy, you know and admit that a mistake's been made. Plus, more from the man convicted alongside Glenn Simmons. I know the truth. And so, for me, knowing the truth is good enough. And new hope from a new attorney. It's clearly a weak case, and they put a man to death, two men to death, on extremely weak evidence. The incredible turn of events, one final day in court. Welcome back. In the past five years, more than 300 people wrongfully convicted have been reunited with their families. 
60% were black. According to the National Registry of Exonerations, innocent black people are seven times more likely to be convicted of murder than innocent white people. Many modern day exonerations involve DNA analysis. But remember in the case of Glenn Simmons, there was no DNA, no physical evidence collected from the crime scene introduced in court. The entire case rested on the eyewitness account of a traumatized teenager. The convincing testimony of that 18 year old girl sent two men to death row. Caged by a conviction he cannot erase, living in a place where barbed wire paints a shadow on the sidewalk. I've never, never been hopeless on. I've never stopped trying to get out. Maybe, maybe if I was guilty. Reasonable doubt runs hot through these veins. I've been trying to get the probable cause affidavits. Mm -hmm. Piles of paperwork stored in Glenn Simmons prison cell will be key to getting out. Why did they take another mugshot three days before the trial? to remind the victim who I want you to pick out the lineup. Police lineups, trial transcripts, they are breadcrumbs leading down a path to innocence. Well, I didn't know nothing about the law. I didn't know nothing about the right to attorney. So I said, OK, knowing I didn't do nothing. So you I agreed to the lineup? 20 years, 21 years old. Yeah. The case is chock full of contradictions. The problem is criticism about a verdict is inconsequential after conviction. Why didn't Glenn Simmons have access to an attorney before the lineup? Why didn't his trial lawyer speak up when the prosecution called Simmons the right-handed trigger man, the one with the gun? I was born left-handed, and at eight years old, I got my right-hand trigger finger cut off. In the 90s, the Court of Criminal Appeals acknowledged the state withheld evidence in Simmons' case, a violation of his civil rights. But the high court denied his request for a new trial and refused to acknowledge innocence. Some of, some of these files are the files that Colonel Allison accumulated. That guilty verdict still haunts Don Roberts, even though he's been out since 2008. I know the truth. And so for me, knowing the truth is good enough. Roberts made parole years ago and built a life in Oklahoma. A convicted, cold-blooded killer with a bachelor's degree in biblical studies and a master's in Christian counseling. You took what I had. You took everything I had. Only thing you didn't take from me is my life. But you took everything I had. So I don't care what you say about me now. You, you said all you could say. You, you threw me on death row. You, 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 put me, you put me in a pit. And I had, and I had to su survive that pit. Roberts paid three decades of his life for a crime he did not do. Perfect crime is when, so, when an innocent person is convicted of it. Then that's a perfect crime. And so whoever did that did a perfect crime. Have you had any misconducts in the last 12 months? No, I haven't. We're back at the Pardon and Parole Board okay. now. It's 2014. Did you shoot anybody? No, sir. Were you there? No, sir. Innocence is irrelevant here. This day is about mercy, and Glenn Simmons has served 39 years. Okay, that's a no vote because we're, we're a board of four at the moment. Parole is denied. Glenn Simmons was denied parole a dozen times over the course of 30 years. Oklahoma has a gross, inhumane mass incarceration problem. There's clearly racial inequalities with the way criminal cases are handled. Today, he has a new attorney. <laughs> Joe Norwood made a splash a few years ago winning a wrongful conviction case in Tulsa County, a murder case with dubious eyewitness testimony. I had a friend uh, reach out and uh, pointed out your stories. This is the box with all Glenn's stuff. I was willing to help him because it was clear he's innocent. Hundreds of hours sifting through Simmons' file, and Joe Norwood built the case for wrongful conviction. We were able to bring in a lot more alibi witnesses. I mean, it, it, you know, you were at the hearing. It was just a parade of people saying Glenn was in New Orleans. For the first time in 48 years, counsel mounted a legitimate defense worthy of an innocent man. 
A dozen witnesses came to testify on Simmons' behalf, including Bob Milfelt, the old prosecutor who sent him to death row, Janice Smith, the murder victim's sister, who now believes Glenn Simmons is innocent, and Don Roberts, his co-defendant in 1975. It's sad that you can get two strangers and put them together and make something happen that didn't happen. The last time these two were in this building together was five decades ago. I thank God that we have lived long enough for this day to occur so people can see that, man, that was a dark day, and it really was. The scales of justice tip differently today than they did in 1975. This time, Simmons' team presented a mountain of alibi evidence. Finally, the defense he always deserved. And then, as if to seal the deal, a surprise admission from the newly elected district attorney. There was a police report, a significant police report, uh, that was not turned over. And so we came to the conclusion, because we believe in fair and just trials in uh, Oklahoma, that we should file an application for requesting a new trial. A judge willing to re-examine a grave injustice tossed out that murder conviction and set him free. I can't even really put it into words. Um, you know, uh, seeing him reunited with his family, uh, um, it's just, you know, like I said, it's just hard to describe. Glenn Simmons walked out of court stunned, confounded, really, that the same criminal justice system that failed him five decades ago is now rebalanced toward truth. But I want to thank you, Ali, for believing in my case. Right. And, you know, sticking with me all these years. It's been 20 years this yeah. year since we did the first interview. Yeah. You know, and, and you told him, you told him yourself, you know, there's something wrong with this case. A free man at 70 years old, eyes ahead, he is moving forward one step at a time, learning how to live in a world he left 50 years ago. Two months after Glenn Simmons' release and the district attorney dropped the 1975 murder charge against him, saying the case would be impossible to prosecute so many years later. Together, Don Roberts and Glenn Simmons served 81 years behind bars. Coming up after the break, beginning life again at 70 years old. Uh, I'm a free man. <laughs> it feels good to be free. A trip to Edmond for the very first time. And meet the private eye who found the evidence that flipped the case. It was all worth it. It was all worth it. Good Lord. It's next. Oklahoma has one of the highest incarceration rates in the country. And Glenn Simmons is the longest serving wrongful conviction in U.S. history. He was released after spending 48 years, five months, 18 days behind bars for a crime he did not commit. This is where felons come for a fresh start. The sign in. Justice navigators are pouring Glenn Simmons a solid foundation for a new life. Every day above ground is a good day. I wanted to scream. Because freedom can be disorienting. They don't know what to do, what direction to go, uh, who to go to. You don't have to stop what you're doing. Count time, you know, yeah. <laughs> and the routine is broke. You know what I, you remember. <laughs> they both remember. John Parker did 18 years at Joseph Harp in the same block as Glenn Simmons. He's been out since 2010. For someone that I walked those yards with to get out and be able to help him reintegrate into society, uh, it's awesome. They are helping Simmons reestablish health care, buy a cell phone, get a birth certificate, food stamps, rent assistance. We're just going to support this man any way that we can to help him transition because uh, I, I just can't imagine being locked up 48 years. 48 years. So much has changed. Yeah, and this, yeah. Yeah, that's all I got with me. Glenn Simmons has decided to stay in Oklahoma. He is renting a home in Oklahoma City. 
been discouraged for years and years, but discouragement, that just juiced to me. You know, just keep going, you know. Indeed, justice has been an exercise in endurance. 50 years fighting death by incarceration. And today, a war on two fronts. Privately, Glenn Simmons has been battling colon cancer, stage four. It's actually his second round with the disease. This time, the cancer has spread to his stomach and his liver. Oncologists are hopeful aggressive chemotherapy will buy him many more years. I believe in a higher power. You know, it's, I'm calm, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good, I've always been good. I've been pissed off, but I'm good. Dear Glenn, good news. I've received some records from the Edmund PD related to your case. The letter is dated 1996. Private investigator Mike Nobles wrote those words to a desperate inmate that he had found a missing police report buried in the old case files at Edmund PD. I just think, I mean, if you look back on that period of time, he was easy. He was easy. And he went, and there wasn't a big fight. That report is impeachment evidence, proof that Glenn Simmons was never picked out of the lineup. It is the blueprint of his innocence. I just wish I'd have done more. I wish I'd have done more. Uh, my God, I wish I'd have done more. Because he deserved it, he deserved it. The state's failure to turn that evidence over, a violation of his constitutional right to a fair trial. <laughs> I'm sorry. Bless his heart. He deserved it. Mike Nobles retired shortly after he found the missing police report. He has always believed Glenn Simmons was innocent. You just made my year, my, my whole life. You made my whole life. I don't know if you if you really know that or not, but you made my life. You made my life. Well, okay. well done, sir. He was supposed to discharge in May. In Oklahoma, one in five inmates returns to prison within three years. Glenn Simmons is determined to beat those odds. Golly, I don't know. I don't know how I would have made this adjustment if it wasn't for my relatives, yeah. or my cousins. He is loving life on the outside, a free man, grateful to all who played a role, fueled by passion to help others like him. There's a lot of guys left behind that went through the same thing I went through, but they, they didn't have a Ollie Myers, you know, or Joe Norwood, you know, and they just keep struggling and struggling for years and years. His journey is a tragedy of injustice, born a lifetime ago in Edmond, Oklahoma. I spent 48 years of my life of committing a crime in this city that I've never been in before. Ooh. A walk through downtown for this man in this town is deliverance. 50 years of defeats and these first steps of freedom begin a new chapter for an innocent man. While the district attorney has admitted Glenn Simmons was wrongfully convicted, the office won't say he's innocent. The eyewitness still believes she helped convict the right two men for murder. A spokesperson for Edmond Police recycled the same statement from 10 years ago. The department tells us they have no reason to believe the wrong people were prosecuted for this crime. So what's next for Glenn Simmons? His attorney has asked a judge for a finding of innocence, which will lay the groundwork for a potential lawsuit against all agencies involved in his wrongful conviction. In Oklahoma, Glenn Simmons may be eligible for $175,000. That's $3,600 a year for every year he spent behind bars. Thanks for joining us for this special presentation from News 4, The Wrong Man.